coming live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. Today we're talking about Ed Galloway's Totem Pole Park in Foyle, Oklahoma. And a little bit later, Oklahoma's hitting the charts in the best places to live. I'm Brett. And I am Harley. We have spent many an afternoon on Route 66. I know as a kid I did and wasn't even aware how cool things were. As an adult, I began to realize there are a lot of really cool things on Route 66 you don't really think about. There are, and I feel like we've been... Neglecting it? No, I feel like there's been a revitalization. Yeah, there has. There really has. And I, and I really think a lot of that... I'm. Uh, we're going to take some of the credit. But I think uh, Lieutenant Governor Pinnell, I think he's done a lot to shine... Uh, some spotlights on Route 66. Oklahoma on, has, yeah, Oklahoma has really kind of taken Route 66 under its wing. Yep. Um, I think we're we're doing more on the portion of Route 66 that's in Oklahoma than anywhere else is. Oh, I think so too. Unless you're on a corner in Winslow, Arizona, which we've been there. Yes, but that's that's not that's neither here nor there. Right. Literally, that's. <laughs> Is there ever been a better example of literally saying that's neither here nor there? No, there hasn't. There hasn't. Been. But let's talk about Chelsea, Oklahoma. Let's do. So Chelsea, Oklahoma is in northwest Oklahoma. If you're in the general vicinity, mm -hmm. you're likely to see one of the weirdest roadside attractions I can think of. Now, I don't think there's any secret that Oklahoma is kind of a... And maybe it's because I've dove deeper into the art of Oklahoma, but when you think of folk artists, do you do you go back as far as like the mid thirties? No, not. I mean Ed Galloway was a trailblazer. He was, and the Totem Pole Park, Ed Galloway's Totem Pole Park, is really one of the oldest and largest examples of folk yeah. art in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I and I think if you when you look at the, the at the totems, you can you can see right away some of the the major influences. It's very they're very they are picturesque, probably because I think he took a lot of his inspiration from postcards throughout Oklahoma. So the construction of the Totem Pole Park started in 1937 yeah. and didn't officially end until 1961, and it's basically had a refurbishment over the last decade. So it's been under construction for a while. Yeah, in, in as far as what the con, what they're constructed of, it's wood, it's concrete, it's rebar. It's not when you think totem poles, I think you automatically think, you know, carved out of a tree. Everybody has that vision. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The artwork represented is a lot of figurative images of birds and Native Americans of nor of the Northwest Coast, Alaska and Plains cultures. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, arranged to face the four cardinal directions. It's really interesting. As a side note, yeah, the guys from American Pickers, oh yeah, stopped in there. There's some photos of them with hanging the out at the with the totems. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, one of the to the largest totems in there is ninety. It stands ninety foot tall, and it's heavily carved. You know, we talked a little bit off the air about bass relief. What exactly is that? And I learned something new. I didn't know that bass relief is basically when they carve into the piece of wood and leave the rest of it relatively untouched. Right. So it still has the the appearance of of the natural form with the the carving on the inside, which I think is really neat. Yeah, that particular totem is made out of red sand red sandstone mm -hmm. framed with steel and wood with a thick concrete skin. It's got a large three dimensional turtle on it. Do you know how tall this thing is? Nine floors tall. Yeah, 90 feet. 90 feet. Yeah. That's, I, I know, I know you're like, yeah, 90 feet, but that's big. That's huge. Right. <laughs> but if you look at the pictures, especially if you can find pictures of people standing next to the totem poles, like the, the one that we we're talking about. Yeah. The turtle is the base of the totem pole. Mm -hmm. It is huge. It is big. It's very big. But also, you can walk inside. Right, look from the outside, it doesn't look like no, it that's doesn't. a thing. Yeah, uh, but they they are actually hollow, hollow, right? And they have not only it's not only 
artwork on the outside, but they have painted murals of mountain scenes and forestry on the inside. And more Native American and, stuff and bird totems and all that sort of stuff. So it's like it's like a totem park, a totem pole park inside of a totem pole park, which is um, kind of crazy. But then that one actually opens up to the sky. Yeah. So you can actually, from the inside, you can see the sun and stars above, which I think is pretty cool. You know, and there's more than one. Of course, you've got the premier totem that's nine stories, also known as 90 foot tall. But they also have an arrowhead totem, a birdbath totem, a tree totem. Right. And these all range in uh, uh, build dates starting in like the 50s. But one of the really, some of the really interesting things Mm -hmm. I think are things that don't hit most people's radar. Okay. They have a set, they have two sets of concrete totem picnic tables with seats. Really? Yeah, they've got a concrete totem barbecue and fireplace. They've got arched gates that look like fish and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Yeah, and if you, you know, once you get your your fill of the totems, they have a, an 11, help me understand this, an 11-sided museum. Yeah, it's called the Fiddle House, and I don't understand the 11 sides. Again. Oh, I do. Okay. It's designed after, okay, you remember when we went to the Grand Canyon? Yes. We saw those octagonal, well, they're they're actually called, a, it's, a, it's a Hogan is what uh-huh. those are. That's why it has 11 sides. It's designed after the Navajo Hogan houses. I see. So inside yeah. of the Hogan mm-hmm. is Ed Galloway's fiddles. He has like, a, there are walls and walls of hand-carved fiddles that really? this guy had uh, worked on throughout his career. But sadly, like everything else, things fall into disrepair after after Ed Galloway dies. He's because he was the cure he was essentially the curator of his own museum. He was the contributor, he was the curator. When he passed away in the early sixties, it of course falls into disrepair. Right, but the, the Rogers County Historical Society acquired it in nineteen eighty nine. They spent a lot of time restoring it. And they they do a really good job of keeping it up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have a lot of different materials, so it's got to be a real task keeping all of this uh, revitalized. Well, not to mention, it's kind of hard to find. It's not exactly right off the highway. Yeah, foil is not a main a mm-hmm. main thoroughfare. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no there's no. Uh, it's not on its way to anything, pretty much. Right. It's off on its own. Now, here's an example, though, of another really cool thing to do, but you you got to you got to plan ahead because it's only open for four hours Monday through Saturday, and then on Sunday another three and a half. It's four and a half. Four and a half. Sorry. Monday through Saturday, 11 to 3 p.m., and then on Sundays, 12.30 to 4. But there's no fee to go in, Mm -hmm. no admission. And um, if you want to go outside of that time or you have a large group, you can reach out to the Rogers County Historical Society directly, and we'll have links to their contact information in the show notes. Well, you should definitely check it out if you're out and about. And if you're looking for the top 100 places to raise a family, we're going to talk about that. Next. So did you get your letter from the IRS? I did. I don't know what it means. I think it means uh, the check's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there have to be some tax consequences. There has to be. To getting paid in advance on is it child tax care right. credits. Yeah, it's confusing. Mm-hmm. And I read that letter a couple of times trying to figure out exactly what I was supposed to do. Yeah. To not get hammered on my next year's taxes. So, yeah, there's there's got to be a catch. There has to be. We're paying for it some. If you're with me, then maybe you should reach out to the people over at Holiday Tax Group for questions like, should I actually take this check from the government? Right. <laughs> uh, Holiday Tax Group is family and locally owned and operated since 2010. They give a 20% discount to all military personnel and teachers. And if you need a free 30-minute consultation, they They've got you covered on that. Just give them a call, 405-730-3100. Or you can find them on the web at HolidayTaxGroup.com. That's Holiday with two L's. I, for one, have started raising a family again, only to find out that I'm actually, I'm probably in one of the best places in the country to raise a family, believe it or not. Yeah, it's a really interesting article. I mean, it's not really, let me take that back. 
It's on Slacker.com. Right. It's Take Sla- it. Slacker's 100 Best Cities to Raise a Family. I thought it was cool that we got called out twice in the state. That's what I'm going to give them. It's a picture and then a brief description of the town for all 100. So uh, basically, though, the methodology that Slacker used to determine the best cities to raise a family mm-hmm. include things like crime rates, school rankings, college graduation rates, cost of living, cost of living, family amenities, recreation, transportation, diversity, and walkability. Not bad. What were some of the other... What are the numbers, though? So, Tulsa ranked as number 86 on the list, and Oklahoma ranked as number 90 on the Best City Stories of Family. So, as far as Tulsa goes, population 400,000. They say it's a family-friendly arts and recreation city. I would agree with that. I mean, the, with the, the gathering place and their, their arts district's a big deal. They've got tons of uh, live music venues and... Always something hustling and bustling in downtown Tulsa, especially. And they have 135 parks and trails throughout the city. That's that's big. That is pretty big. I, I, I will say, I, I may be wrong, but I think that they may have Oklahoma City beat. Well, on the list, they did. By four. <laughs> well, yeah, by four. <laughs> but I'm talking in terms of having the, the amenities slash recreation they might have might have a slight well they do have an edge obviously i'm going to say they probably they do have a, a little bit more going on in the way of family friendly activities in mm-hmm. tulsa i would say over oklahoma city not huge yeah. it's not dramatic as far as i'm concerned um but i think they've done a they've been doing it longer yeah you kind of take oklahoma city's biggest park in tulsa's the gathering place Scissortail park it's a little, it's it's kind of spread out. It's, it, you know what I mean? It doesn't have a, I don't know. I kind of feel like the gathering place is like Martin Nature Park meets Jurassic Park. I mean, it's just this big sprawling. It is huge. Yeah. And as far as, I guess, size matters when it comes to, right, <laughs> comes to it talking does. about parks. Um, but as far as Oklahoma City, they, they said Oklahoma is known for its cowboy, its cowboy culture and its surrounding oil wells. I'm not really sure how that sells yeah, that the top 100 best places to raise a family. And they called out the Oklahoma School of Science and Mathematics as the number one high school out of the state's 438. The median home values in the area are $148,000. So, again, if you're starting a family, that's that's a reasonable dollar amount for a, a new home. What I will say, in, in the industry I work with, work in, I, I meet people that are... Real estate agents, home buyers, home builders, yada, yada, yada. There is a, right now, and I think you can say the same thing. I I hate to even say Texas, but just to kind of paint a picture, there are a lot of people that are migrating from the coasts to the wests. Yes. Uh, South, I mean, I'm meeting people from California, New York City, that are coming here because your dollar, let's be realistic, 148 grand in California? might get you a one bedroom studio apartment, you know, rented for, you know, a six month lease. I mean it's <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know it what I'm really saying? Is, it's just yeah. when you think about value for value, I mean you really get more bang for your buck in this part of the country, honestly. And if we're gonna be honest <laughs> and if you were to talk about the people yeah. that reside I'm telling you I've been all over the country. The mm-hmm. people in Oklahoma are nice. some of the nicest people you will ever meet. Right. And that's one thing that you hear a lot from people from elsewhere. How nice. You guys are just nice people. You guys are nice people. I mean, you know, there's pockets of a-holes everywhere you go. But for Sorry the, about that. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but I think that you really can't miss here. There's a so, little something for everyone. I couldn't live somewhere where I didn't have winter or snow or cheap rent (laughs) i just couldn't do it well if you're looking for a cool place to live you know where to come it's oklahoma for sure we're in the we're in the top 100 and speaking of things that are in the top 100 the last time i checked right as far as podcasts Mm -hmm. in new zealand yeah for some reason the only an okay show is killing it with the new zealanders i don't know why how are we doing in glasgow um (laughs) I don't know. People love us, but you can help us hit the top 100 globally. Globally. 
And all you have to do is tell it, tell your friends, tell your family about the Only in OK show. New shows every week. Rain, sleet, snow, or childbirth. <laughs> this has been the Only in OK show. I am Harley. And I'm Brett. And we're out of here. Peace. Today I said to you, hey man, uh, keep the lawn mower for a little bit. Our, mo- our, lawn, our lawn just got mowed. How does grass grow more when it doesn't rain? Dude, it's been raining here every day. I don't know when you didn't get rain, but it, it, it has me running. It's barely rained at all at home, and the grass looks like I, like I just flushed money down the toilet. Yeah, Amber said we're basically, they showed a picture of the storm. From a distance that occurred, and it was just this round. It looked like a spaceship made of clouds, just a circular formation. Everything outside of it's fine. I'm trying to. Th- I think there's a lot of things that we say that are funnier. This is what separates us from being funny for a living. People that are funny for a living will say something funny, and it's our job to laugh. They won't laugh at it. Right. There's so many things that we say that are that could be legitimately funny. But it's ruined by our own laugh track. <laughs> I can see that. Something I said in the outtakes of the last show, Shadow Bone. Yeah, it was completely and lost. It was completely lost because... Because we were it, laughing the whole right. time, yeah. It's one of the indigenous tribes that still lives indigenous. And there was a guy who went and lived with them. He was on Rogan. He took stool samples from these people. And they have like a hundred times more... And 20,000 more species of Of flora, of flora in their stomach. Really? You and I are so delicate, thanks to the modern American diet. Right. That, you know, if we eat a hot dog that's seven minutes past the expiration date, we end up in the ER. Mm -hmm. These guys are eating real dogs that have been in the sun (laughs) dead for five days. True. Like they're just eating it straight out of the cavity. Yeah. They're not only eating the dog, but what the dog ate. Right. And, and still healthier. Like you could, the body could, makes a perfect bowl. <laughs> you could cap, you could capsulate probably their fecal matter and, and have a pretty, probably the, the most powerful probiotic. Probably. It's kind of gross, but probably. I have an unhealthy relationship with food. Yep. I walk 15,000 freaking steps a day and I don't eat enough. So then when I'm hungry, I just want to eat everything but the fucking kitchen sink. Yeah, I'm with you. Ah! All right, you about ready to kick it? Wiki, wiki, wiki. Old school. You can get with this, or you can get with that. Remember that song? Mm-hmm. Diggable planets. The totem pole park. And Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about... Let's not. Like the, <laughs> I, but the minute I, when I think about it, someone gets pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a simpler time when... The, when when, when bells ring, the angels got their wings. That I, I long for a simpler time. Are we recording? Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's kill this puppy. <clears throat> so, today, we're going to put more things on the internet. Today, we're putting more things on the internet than you can search for. It's time to put things... On the internet. It's time. It's time once again to put things on the internet. Once again, on the internet. It's time once again to put things on the internet. Are you ready? It's time once again to put things on the internet. Are you ready to put things on the internet? Once again, putting things on the web. Goodbye. It's time to put things on the internet in stereo sound. Surround sound. Three-dimensional. High definition. 5.1 surround. It's time once again to put things on the internet. It is time. To put things on the internet. It's time once again to put things on the internet. 
It's time once again to put things on the internet. It's time to put things on the internet. Mamma mia! Let's get it on, baby. You ready? <coughs> Juiced up? You ready to talk about totem poles? Fishing poles, totem poles. The healing properties of totem poles. <laughs> Stripper poles. I know all the poles. Burke. Ugh. Do you have a Ed Galloway totem pole? No. You're not good if you did. It's time to put things on the internet. On here. So you'll have to delete those. Three, two, one. Why the look of disbelief? What things on the internet? Because I've been saying, it's time to put things on the internet. Multiple oh, times. Got it. She won. Hang on. Three, two, one. Uh, yes. Oh. Are you ready? Yeah, dude. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today we're talking about Totem Pole Park and pum 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 pop. We're talking about a Totem Pole to- Park. Totem Pole Park. Well, you put we are talking about a Totem Pole Park. Is there more than one Totem Pole Park? No, but we didn't specifically call out the name. Can we say his name in the opening? You can do whatever you want. Three, two, one. Yeah, can you not? <laughs> Three, two, one.